and I can, I can pull on that just one more way. And it's not going to come off that chuck. So the first thing I want to show you is the chuck screw. So it looks like this. And this is a drill bit that I've taped to the depth of the screw that I use. And that brings the piece of timber nice and flat onto the front of the chuck. So when I'm mounting the chuck screw into the chuck, my main goal is, if you see the back of the jaws just here, the back of the chuck jaws, I want the shoulder of the wood screw just here, this flat section here, the chuck jaws, sit there, and this sits behind the chuck jaws, into that shoulder. So when I put it on the chuck, it'll go in there like that, and it'll meet the back of the chuck jaws. So when I place the chuck screw, the, the wood screw, into the chuck jaws, and then I feel I've got the back of the wood screw, I tighten it up, and you can see there where that shoulder is resting up against the back of the chuck jaws. So when I go to mount the bowl blank onto the chuck screw, I turn the lathe on, have it running low, I present the bowl, the hole up to the chuck screw, and it will slowly start feeding itself on. I've got my left hand underneath holding it from turning, my right hand gives extra support, and it just feeds itself on. A little bit more speed. And just before it binds on to the thread and reaches the front of the chuck, some people, some people that are more experienced that like that use chuck screws all the time will just feed it on. If you've ever seen a, uh, Richard Raffin or a professional wood turner feed it onto the chuck screw, they'll just let it wind on and then they'll let it go. Until you get used to it, just I suggest do it like this. Just lock off the spindle and then bring the bowl up and then wind it on nice and tight. So that is the wood screw. So this is the Glenn Lucas remounting faceplate. Mine looks a little second hand, a bit like, what's that, what's that guy on the cartoons back in the, with the bolts in the neck and the big stitches, you know, they bring him back to life. Looks a bit like, that. first thing you want to do is bring, is bring it to the faceplate yet again and then giving that a clean, winding the, the hand wheel on and then just giving it a, a light flick at the end. And when I do that, I go reverse. So wheel comes towards me, and then the face of the spindle, whatever I've got in there, the chuck or this, goes the opposite way. You will need your tail stock and tool rest. Now just quickly before I continue, always use a cup center when you're turning bowls, because the cup, this point here is a larger surface area, and it won't dig in like your cone center will. Your cone center will keep forcing in, you'll keep tightening it up, and you'll keep wondering why everything's coming loose. Took me a little while to figure that one out. Let's get a bowl. So with this bowl in particular, when you're using this method, you want to remove this little bit of stuff down the bottom here, the little nub. So when it's in the bowl, in the bowl and it gets caught out, they have a little nub on the bottom of them when they get snapped off from the mother bowl or the, the, the main bowl. So there's a couple of ways of removing it. These are cut sole wheels, these ones here, and they're, this one's uh, the medium one, the blue one. It's uh, fairly aggressive, and this one here is nice and light and easy, and they're both on um, some grinders. If you don't have these, don't worry. Just use your chisel that you've got at home. But all you need to do is get your chisel, and then slide it along there, Oh. and then knock it off, like so. And then that forms a nice flat surface when you, you can use your chisel. So I don't need to go out and buy more stuff. It's pretty really expensive gain as it is. So you have the end grain facing upwards because the end grain will, will be the highest point because the shoulders of the side grain have dropped. End grain there. Now, give yourself enough room, so just spin some of your tail stock out, but this point is imperative, don't, imperative. Don't push it all the way home. Bring over your tool rest. So when I spin that around, you'll see that it's close here, and then it's further away there. And the reason why I said before not to tighten up your tail stock is because of that exact same, is for that exact reason. Now, 
when you go to move it across, if you want to learn how to balance up live edge bowls, I've made a video and I'll put that in the description as well if that's something you're interested. Bring that towards myself. Place the tail stop back, don't lock it off. And then undo the, yep. Spin it around. And there's a bit more of a gap there. I tend to place my thumb, it touches there. And there's a fair bit of a gap there. So I'm just gonna shift it towards myself. Shifted it a smidge back there. Oh, look at that. That will be, if you really, really want to. For example, if it's a, it's a you know, it's a prized piece of timber and you don't want to lose a lot or you've done what I've done and made it too thin, balancing up the bowl will save a lot of material. And I'm pretty happy with that. It's about three or four mil out tighten it up and then you're away and then you're good to go. That's the reason why I really like this method is because you have the chance to balance up your bowl before you turn off the sides and waste a lot of material on one side compared to the other. So this is the Glen Lucas remounting plate and that's how I remount bowl blanks with this method. So the next method is the chuck tail stock method and I bring the VM100 chuck onto the lathe, give it that snap, keep the metal nice and bond together. Using the cup center again, I'm gonna bring up the tail stock. What I like to do with this method is open the chuck, the chuck jaws as wide as I can. I open them wide, so that give me a greater surface area on the inside of the bowl. So the, oops, there it is. So if that ever happens and your chuck pops out like so, just place it back in, find where you went past, and then wind it back in. Slot it back into place. So obviously I could use one of my larger chucks, but not everyone's got larger chucks. I just want to use something that's fairly universal that we can all use. Open the chuck up nice and wide. I place the chuck on. I can remove the base, but I've already shown you how to do that. I bring up the tail stock. Now you can also, balance the bowl on this method as well, but it's just, you've got to do it both ways. So you have to go plumb, you have to go vertical, as well as circular. So as you turn it, I place my thumb on the tool rest. I place my thumb on the tool rest and bring it around. And I've fluked that, I've absolutely jagged it. But eyeball it down. I know the rim will warp, but just go to where it looks nice and even running behind the chuck or running with the chuck. So what I'm saying is use the back of the chuck, use whatever you can, whatever resource you have to your disposal to mount your bowl plumb and true, as true as you can. So what I'm saying is use the back of the chuck as the bowl and the rim to guide you. So if it looks a little, you've got a little bit too much silver or whatever color it is on your lathe, just adjust the bowl where it needs to go until it's running nice and true for yourself. So that's all you need to do there. So eye it up, running nice, tighten up your tail stock, lock everything off. It's quite a sturdy way to do it. Bring up the speed. I'm gonna do a pull cut. It's quite a safe way how to do it. Just make sure, make sure everything is locked off and safe for yourself, okay? If you can see there, when I've just done that, if what I was getting back to earlier, see how I've removed the sheen. So that was the wood glue from the end grain that I've put on. I think I've actually just painted this whole bowl, but it actually makes it stand out even more. I've shaved that side off, but I've still got enough material there. I'm not removing a lot of material to start making my way around there to true up the other side. So that's why balancing your bowls and making them spin true is really important to not waste our precious resource. So now we'll move on to the Richard Raffin method. Is if you've had a core or a bowl previously turned and you've let them dry out, or you don't have a bowl coring system and you start your bowl blanks by hollowing them out or forming a tenon 
and then hollowing them out. So just make sure the base is running fairly flat before you put it on the chuck jaws and it doesn't bottom out in the face of the chuck jaws. So what I mean by that is if the bottom of the bowl has a hump in them and you could use your chisel, a, your sand or anything like that to try and make that bowl nice and flat or you could just start it like this, bring up the tail stock, make it flat and then sand that little nub off and then remount it in there. Just gonna mount it straight into the chuck jaws and I learned this off Glenn Lucas. When he tightens his chuck jaws up on any piece, he has the grain flowing in between where he will tighten the jaws of the chuck up. So hand inside the bowl, pressing against the chuck jaws, and I can see already that it's not bottoming out through looking down inside the chuck jaws. I'm saying chuck jaws, I wonder how many times I've said chuck jaws. Let's take off the tail stock. And what you'll need for this is your skew chisel and your bowl gouge or a spindle gouge, whatever you prefer to use when you're turning. I've got a little 12 mil bowl gouge here and a one inch 25 mil skew. And I've got a 45 degree bevel on that with the heel removed on these bowl gouges. First thing is we wanna true up the face of the bowl and then we're gonna make an indent with our skew or take it down a little bit with the gouge, make an indent with our skew and then we'll be laughing. And then we'll be able to turn it around and then expand the jaws into it. So first thing is turn the bowl, make sure it's not gonna hit our beautiful tool rest. We're going to push into the timber because if you ride the timber back like so, you'll just ride any indentations and yes. So turn it on. Have our face shield down previously. You can see how much it's warped out of shape. Overgrass grip and we're just gonna push in. I'm using this side of the bevel, just here. I'm using this edge of the bevel, there. Speed up a bit. All right, so we've cleaned up the front there. This is a piece of mango timber and you can see that it's had some bugs in it. Now I'm gonna make a clean cut on the inside of the bowl there. Make sure I'm running, running to center, which I am there. Lathe on. Pinky supporting the back of the cutting edge there. Handle away. That should be enough. Oops, there goes my pencil. Never be tempted to put your hand in when it's spinning to clear shavings. So now inside there, we've got a bit of an angle and I'm, I'm not quite happy with it. So I wanna make sure there's a little bit of more of a groove down here into this, into this shoulder, into here, into that shoulder. So I'm just gonna get my skew. You don't have to, you could just get away with it with your bowl gouge. If you wanted to just use your bowl gouge, just bring your handle out away from you and press that tip into there. I'll show you how to do that. Handle out away, support the back of the cutting edge. And when I'm turning this, I'm looking on the other side. Because if I put my head over there, I'll get in your way. But I'm looking on that side as well because I can see how much material I need to take out. So if, you, if the shavings ever get in your way, so you're turning away and the shavings get in your way, Keep an eye on the opposite side. A bit more speed. I'm running at 850 RPM. And that'll do it right there. So that is nice and clean. If you wanted to use your skew chisel, 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 to get more of a cleaner angle, I'll show you. So one inch skew there. Have it flat on the tool rest, and a way of gauging whether you're gonna be cutting on center is you can just lay your tool flat on the rest and see if it's lining up with the center of the bowl. Get your skew chisel, finger over the front, have the tool running underneath your, underneath your arm. It gives you that extra strength in holding the tool. 
tip facing into the bowl, turn it on, place it on the fillet. I'm looking over there again because I can't see, and then just push it in. Away you go. So all you need to do from there is remove the tail stock, put your beautiful gaiters away, that's why I like my, my little trolley. Take the bowl off, and now when you turn it around, you will expand to the inside of that shoulder that you've just created. Hold the back of your bowl, expand your jaws, and you can see why you might need a, a larger set of jaws if you're doing bigger bowls. Expand the set of your jaws, place it in until you can feel, you can feel the outside of your jaws here. So as, as you can see there, the outside of my jaws are resting up into that shoulder that we created with the gouge and the skew chisel. So it's in there, and then all you need to do is expand your jaws into it, tighten it up. When you're doing that, have your hand on the other side, pushing against, pushing it against it, holding it nice and tight. And I can, I can pull on that, just pull my weight. And it's not going to come off that chuck, okay? If you would like still, you could bring up your tail stock and put it in the back for extra security and safety, if that's what you prefer to do. So let's turn it on and see how it goes. So that's looking really nice. So from there, you would form up your tenon and then reshape the outside of your bowl, flip it around, put it into the chuck, and then finish up the inside, put a finish on it, and then you're on to the next one and worrying about taking off the tenon later on. And if you would like to know how to remount live edge bowls, I'll link a video just here, so go check that out, and it's called Balancing Your Bowls. Thanks very much, and I'll talk to you all directly. Cheers. Bye.